Hello again, it's Manufacturer Series time. I was only able to do one race, so with a little luck, I get a good result. And I think I got both and had a ton of fun as well. Underway, starting in P11. The first actual turn is the hairpin. Expecting chaos, cars all over. That was a little slow through there, but everyone played nicely. I even managed to gain a place out of it as well. As I try to pick up the slipstream, note I didn't practice on the hard tires at all. At the end of the straight, I missed the braking point slightly and end up tapping the Mercedes of Dr. Cage. I slowed to make sure he kept the place. There's the tap. Good thing I slowed because look out! Now that wasn't his fault. It was actually the Jaguar back there. Benefit of the doubt, we'll call it an honest mistake. Into the tunnel section, as I call it, all kinds of chaos now, including myself. I completely blew by the braking point there. I was driving in my radar too much and forgot to look where I was going, which tends to help when you're driving. Into the S's, where I find I'm a little slow through here. A couple of drivers having moments of their own, and through all of that, I still end up in 10th place. Overall, can't complain too much about that for a first lap. I made a couple minor errors, there was clean driving by most, and I make a net gain of one place. Back to the straight, where I once again missed my braking point. I tried to brake earlier, guess that wasn't early enough. Still holding on to 10th place, side by side ahead, this didn't look good. Louis 40 manages to make the racing line though, and fortunately, the issues end up behind me. A slight tap to Louis there, sorry about that buddy. Again, still hadn't fully adjusted to the hard tires. More issues ahead, a Porsche ends up off into the realms, and I end up in ninth place after two laps. It was very nearly a disaster though, as Phyrexis, right behind me, clearly makes a mistake and almost takes me out. Good accident avoidance there by him. Lap three, it's my turn to get the hairpin all kinds of wrong. I end up way off line, way too deep, Evasive maneuvers are done, and that's enough for Stormfront 65 to get through. I wind up close enough for a slipstream. Now, can I finally get the right-hander correct? No, I go too deep again. No harm though, everyone gets through the S's and tunnels unscathed as well. Down the front straight, I get the slipstream advantage over Louis 40 GT, who would actually run a little wide in the hairpin, probably would have had him there regardless. Attempt number four at the right-hander. That's a no. Hey, I was at least a little closer to the apex, you know? And while we're at it... Attempt number five. Much better there. It only took five tries. At least my lap time started to come down a little bit as the field is now quite spread out. This would lead to a couple of uneventful laps We'll jump now to lap eight. Still behind our Bucklew, who catches too much curb, unsettles his car. This opens the door for me. I have a brief look to the outside, but go for the switchback, and I get the run on him down the straight. He would stay close in the slipstream, but I would eventually open up a half a second or so gap. Lap eight is the pit window for anyone starting on soft tires. There was only one or two, and I was not within anyone's pit delta to gain a place. I would, however, move ahead of TCR Dave on lap 9 due to a track limits penalty, and another later on for pit stop. So I'm up to P6 by the time I hit my pit window. My plan was at least 10 on hard tires. I'm not struggling with tires just yet, so I decided to push it to 11. I didn't feel like I struggled with tires until I got about halfway or so through lap 11. I could have nursed the tires further, but seven laps on soft tires would be no issue. Luckily as I pit, the two drivers right behind me stop as well, minimizing the places lost. I would exit in P9, not quite a full second ahead of B-Go. However, my fresh soft tires would let me pull away with no issue over the next few laps. With most pit stops done by this point, and the field as spread out as it was, now was the time to put my head down and string together some nice clean laps. Ahead to lap 16, a weird moment happened here. I've just about caught Phyrexis for P7. I 
figured if I could stay behind him and get a slipstream down the main straight, I could pass at or even before the hairpin. As we go through the S's and into the right-hander, suddenly, he teleports behind me. Neither of us had a particularly bad connection. I don't know what to think of that, and I'm curious what it looked like on his end. I was rather looking forward to attempting another overtake, actually, but I suppose I'll take it. P7 is where I would finish. A decent result for 18 laps and starting in P11, as I was a good two seconds plus off the pace of the leader. Thanks for joining me. On your way out, please do hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. I will see you soon with another. Thanks for watching.